Do you remember the beloved sitcom Living Single? If so, then you undoubtedly recall the charismatic character of Kyle, brought to life by T.C. Carson on the show. You make it impossible to talk to you. Everything is a tug of war. Kyle, what do you want? I want a woman who is affectionate. I want a woman who has a picture of me in her apartment. However, what you might not know is the behind-the-scenes saga that unfolded in Hollywood, leading him to be fired from the show due to the age-old narrative of black actors being difficult to work with. Kinda, I kind of got blackballed. Uh, there was a rumor going around that I was difficult to work with, mm. that I come to work unprepared. T.C. Carson has bravely stepped forward to shed light on the industry's treatment of black talent, revealing how it can be a double-edged sword that jeopardizes careers. So, let's delve into the untold story of T.C. Carson's journey through the tumultuous world of entertainment. In a candid and revealing interview with Comedy Hype, T.C. Carson shared his experiences in the entertainment industry, shedding light on the challenges he faced after being let go from the show and the impact it had on his career. Carson mentioned that there was a pervasive rumor suggesting that he was difficult to work with and that he came to work unprepared. These accusations were, according to Carson, entirely untrue. He shared how this falsehood impacted his career, leading to a period of diminished opportunities and casting directors viewing him in a negative light. So I heard that you were difficult. I heard that you, you know, came to work unprepared. I said, you know what? This interview's over. Thank you so much for your time. And I just got up and walked out. The experience of being falsely accused was emotionally devastating for him, as it tarnished his reputation and hindered his chances of landing new roles. In any case, the interview with T.C. Carson raises important questions about the industry treatment of black actors and the challenges they face in maintaining their careers. Carson's revelation about being blackballed is a stark reminder of the systemic biases that persist in the entertainment world. Kind of, I kind of got blackballed. Uh, there was a rumor going around that I was difficult to work with, mm. that I come to work unprepared. The tendency to stigmatize black actors and label them as difficult or uncooperative is an issue that has been raised by other prominent black figures in the industry as well. Carson's story highlights the importance of addressing these biases and promoting diversity and inclusivity in the industry. It serves as a call to action for industry leaders to challenge preconceptions and create opportunities for talented actors irrespective of their race or background. Carson's interview also touches on the impact of false accusations on an actor's career and personal well-being. Being wrongly labeled as difficult or unprepared can have lasting consequences on an actor's reputation and opportunities. In the competitive world of entertainment, perception often shapes reality, and unfounded rumors can hinder an actor's ability to secure meaningful roles. One of the most poignant aspects of T.C. Carson's interview is his admission that he faced a significant struggle to redeem his career after the fallout from living single. The blackballing he experienced led to a period of limited opportunities and roles that didn't align with his artistic aspirations. Once I took a role that I really didn't want to take, but I needed the coin, and it was the worst decision, it was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. Carson's journey reflects the difficulties that many black actors encounter when navigating an industry that often fails to provide them with the recognition and opportunities they deserve. Furthermore, apart from the industry's blackballing of TC following his tenure on Living Single, there have been allegations that Hollywood appropriated the show's entire concept and fashioned an all-white cast version of it. In fact, some who worked on Living Single are skeptical of the originality of Friends, with Queen Latifah doubting it publicly during a 2017 appearance on Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live. It was one of those things where it was a guy called Warren Littlefield that used to run NBC, and they asked him when all the new shows came out, they said, if there's any show you could have, which one would it be? And he said, Living Single, and then he created Friends, she said. Soon after, Friends and Living Single were pitted against each other in a battle for audiences, and it wasn't a fair fight. As Friends became popular, it received more promotion from NBC, while Living Single was left to flounder and slowly fade from the limelight by Fox. 
In the 90s up through today, anyone can walk into a gift shop in New York City and find friends' cups, t-shirts, pens, hats, calendars, and every other form of merchandise. In contrast, merch for living single was nowhere to be found. Even worse, all pretenses were dropped when Fox moved living single from its prime Sunday night spot to Thursday to compete directly with Friends' Thursday night spot on NBC. A stark polarization developed in which viewers had to choose between the sitcoms, and the rest is history. Friends went on to become a cultural juggernaut still popular today, and Living Single was cancelled after five seasons. I was mad because we didn't get any credit for it. We got no acknowledgement, that's what bothered me the most. It was too similar, it was six black folks living in New York City versus six white folks living in New York City. They say Friends is the most creative show in the world, but Yvette didn't get that credit, said John Henton in an interview with Comedy Hype. In another interview with Comedy Hype, T.C. Carson said, In a lot of ways, we were fighting for the respect we were getting less than the other shows. And then they created Friends and gave them everything, and both shows were Warner Brothers shows on Warner Brothers lots. To be on our lot and to watch, that was really kind of a slap in the face. In any case, Living Single, created by Yvette Lee Bowser, remains an iconic sitcom that premiered on Fox in 1993. The show featured an all-black cast and quickly became an unexpected hit, captivating audiences with its witty humor, relatable characters, and groundbreaking portrayal of young black professionals in New York City. The inception of Living Single is rooted in Yvette Lee Bowser's vision to create a television show that provided more authentic and well-rounded depictions of black people. Yvette, a frustrated writer working on a show about black individuals where few held positions of power behind the scenes, felt compelled to change the narrative. Her desire was not only to challenge stereotypes, but also to cultivate a workplace that was welcoming and inclusive, particularly for women and people of color. As the story goes, Yvette had a studio deal, as did Queen Latifah, and the two were brought together by the studio. The studio then searched for the right person to craft a show around the two of them. Yvette's creative impulse led her to develop a concept rooted in her own experiences, a show about her and her friends navigating the challenges of young adulthood in the bustling metropolis of New York City. With Queen Latifah and Kim Coles on board, Yvette sought to assemble a cast that would complement and enhance the show's dynamic. Given that Queen Latifah and Kim Coles were relatively new to narrative storytelling on TV, Yvette recognized the importance of surrounding them with seasoned actors who could bring depth and authenticity to the characters. Yvette took an unconventional approach during the casting process. She actively participated in pre-reads, where casting teams met with actors interested in various roles. This hands-on involvement allowed her to gain insights into the process and refine her casting sensibility. Her commitment to assembling the right ensemble paid off when Erica Alexander's audition for the role of Maxine Max Shaw revealed her remarkable comedic talent. However, it's worth noting that the journey to cast Erica as Max was not without its challenges. Executives initially entertained the idea of cutting Erica from the ensemble, but ultimately a compromise was reached. This twist of fate led to Max living across the street from the rest of the cast, a decision that would profoundly impact the show's dynamic. Selecting the right actor to portray Kyle Barker was another crucial step. Yvette discovered T.C. Carson, an actor from Chicago, through a VHS audition tape. Her instincts told her that he was the perfect fit for the character. Interestingly, Erica Alexander and T.C. Carson shared a birthday, aligning with Yvette's vision that they were two sides of the same coin. Surprisingly, Erica and T.C. did not participate in a chemistry read, a common practice today when casting pivotal roles. Nevertheless, Yvette's intuition proved accurate, as their on-screen chemistry would become one of the show's defining elements. Completing the cast with Regine and Overton was the next task. Yvette already had a clear vision of who would excel in these roles. Kim Fields, known for her role as 2D on The Facts of Life, was a natural choice for Regine. Her portrayal would provide a contrast to her previous character and add depth to the ensemble. John Henton, whom Yvette had noticed in a pilot for an unreleased show, emerged as the perfect choice for Overton. His lovable and humorous persona made him a standout candidate, even if Yvette wasn't initially sure about his acting prowess. The casting process solidified the chemistry among the main cast members, setting the stage for the show's success. The show's evolution extended beyond its initial concept and casting choices. 
In fact, Living Single underwent some noteworthy changes as it navigated its five-season journey. One significant alteration was the shift in the show's title from My Girls to Living Single, a change that occurred just before its debut. This renaming would come to symbolize the essence of the show, a celebration of the single life and the bonds of friendship. The show's iconic theme song, performed by Queen Latifah herself, became an integral part of its identity. While Queen Latifah's rapping skills were evident, she also lent her vocals to the singing portions of the song, making it instantly recognizable to fans. Another beloved element of the show's intro was the silhouette of a dancing woman. This enigmatic figure, initially attributed to various individuals, was eventually revealed to be Leslie Seeger, also known as Big Les, a dancer, choreographer, actress, and multifaceted talent. Her captivating dance moves became a visual hallmark of the show's opening sequence. Living Single introduced viewers to a vibrant ensemble of characters, each contributing to the show's charm and relatability. The series revolved around three women and two men, living in two separate apartments within the same building, and a sixth character who spent so much time with them that she became an honorary fourth roommate. Khadija James, portrayed by Queen Latifah, was the cornerstone of the series. A Howard University graduate and the driven editor and publisher of Flavor magazine, Khadija epitomized hard work and entrepreneurial spirit. Her character offered a refreshing representation of a successful black woman in media. Living with Khadija was her cousin Sinclair James, affectionately known as Sinclair, played by Kim Coles. Sinclair was the embodiment of innocence and optimism. Her aspirations of becoming an actress were underscored by her role as Khadija's receptionist, creating a lovable and quirky character. Regina Regine Hunter, portrayed by Kim Fields, added an element of humor and drama to the mix. Regine's unapologetic quest for a wealthy suitor to marry provided comedic relief, while her character's flaws and vulnerability made her relatable to viewers. Maxine Max Shaw, brought to life by Erica Alexander, was the sharp-tongued attorney who served as Khadija's best friend. Her independent and outspoken nature challenged conventional gender roles, offering a bold representation of a black woman in a professional setting. Upstairs in the second apartment resided Kyle Barker, portrayed by T.C. Carson. As a stockbroker, Kyle was both charming and at times abrasive. His witty banter with Max provided the show with memorable moments. Completing the ensemble was Overton Wakefield Jones, portrayed by John Henton. Overton, the building's friendly and simple-minded maintenance man, harbored a long-standing crush on Sinclair. His character's transformation from a shy admirer to Sinclair's boyfriend added depth to the series. Living Single made a significant impact on television during its run and left a lasting legacy. One of its most notable contributions was the portrayal of young black professionals navigating life in a vibrant city. Prior to the show, such portrayals were scarce on television. Living Single broke new ground by presenting characters who were smart, successful, and relatable. The series also challenged stereotypes and showcased the diversity of experiences within the black community. It defied one-dimensional portrayals, allowing each character to have their own unique personalities, quirks, and ambitions. Max's character, in particular, shattered stereotypes by portraying a strong, career-driven black woman who wasn't afraid to speak her mind. Living Single also highlighted the significance of friendship, which was at the core of the show. The characters' close-knit bond, their shared laughter and challenges, resonated with viewers of all backgrounds. The depiction of strong, supportive friendships among black women was a groundbreaking aspect of the series. Additionally, the show tackled relevant social issues, such as racism, relationships, and workplace dynamics, in a way that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. It provided a platform for addressing these issues while maintaining its signature humor and wit. In any case, fans have condemned the industry for blackballing TC and the entire living single show. One particular fan wrote, never ceases to amaze me how when a show has a predominantly pocket cast, it's considered only for that race of audience. But the minute a show has a predominantly white cast, it's considered for all audiences and is said to have a broader reach doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that they're intending to not only mainly cater to white audiences, but also to promote white supremacy and cultural assimilation to whiteness. To endorse the mindset that even if you are not white, you should be striving and aspiring to be as close to it as possible. They act allergic to diversity because diversity doesn't promote white supremacy. And for them, white audiences and culture are the main ones that matter. 
A second fan spoke about the show being a massive hit, saying, it definitely was and they minimized it greatly for Friends, which was nowhere near as good. In any case, despite the entertainment industry's vocal endorsement of diversity and inclusivity, its actions often fall far short of its professed values. It's a glaring paradox that raises questions about the sincerity of these claims. As opportunities for underrepresented voices remain limited, the industry's commitment to genuine diversity and inclusion is frequently called into question, leaving fans to wonder if it's more about talk than meaningful action. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.